Hello again, and I'm Philip Fursoff, and this time I've gone down the beach a little bit towards the White Cliffs in Eastbourne, which is the beginning of the Seven Sisters and Beachy Head. And um, I've just set up on the edge of a fence here on the pebbles. I'm going to try and wait for magic light to hit this cliff face, which is going to be white and uh, reflecting lots of golden colours. And um, there's also a very nice depth here as the hill rolls over the horizon. So I can see that there's a foreground which is going to be a little bit more specific and then as the cliff gets further away it'll get slightly more out of focus. So how to do that with paint? Well, I'm just going to start off by pouring water onto my palette and um, tracing with a pointy brush the edge of the cliff with a little bit of green. So a bit of turquoise green here and uh, starting off on the horizon I'm just going to put the horizon line in and a bit of muddy mossy seaweed at the front and then just tracing this cliff as it comes up and arches over with various shapes that are little bushes and things rolling over the edge of the cliff and then getting higher more defined towards the front. So here I'm going to build up patches of green, stippling in some shrubbery and things, and then a bit more yellow as well. So breaking that up with green and yellow marks. So this is how this area is going to be a bit more specifically drawn in uh, with a thinner brush. I'm going to just scribble around the edges of these bushes here. So that leaves me out with this beautiful area here of cliff, which is white chalk and it's very, very reflective. And then on top of it, a bit of heather and grass, so yellow ochre, a uh, bit of yellow ochre there on the edge of the grass. And reaching towards these slopes of cliff. And then a little bit of yellow ochre in the chalk as well. So some of this chalk is broken up by iron oxide, which is um, forming these kind of rusty, wavy bits of rock just rolling down there. Um, also, I could get a little bit of darker colour, something like a purple, and as this falls, just stroke in a few lines going back and then on the undercuts of fallen rocks that roll down the edge of the cliff just pile up some edges okay and there's also some beautiful fences also at the front so I'll build those up break them up with vertical posts in sequences so they're getting smaller as they get further away back into there uh, and then I'll just take a wider flatter brush and put in a bit of beach so roll some yellow ochre across here and put some yellow ochre into the fence posts as well and then there's a beautiful greenish sea so I'll put water um, just onto the palette again and then wet this area of sea wet the paper so that mixes this greenish haze into that water there and it's very shallow you can see bits of waves breaking that up so dashing a bit of blue across 
and then as the sea gets to the end there'll be a thicker line so a bit of turquoise blue something like that so that's showing that that's far water and near water so with the near water I'm going to take the tip and just draw the top of these waves rolling across with little straight horizontal dashes and there's even bits of purple in there reflecting the bottom of a cloud somewhere uh, looming over that so there's all these beautiful clouds that I'll scribble in with purple over that so that's going to be purple and dark blue shades and with a different kind of brush, a flathead brush I'm going to press the paint onto that surface leaving some of that cloudy edge a bit rough and then straighter heavier volume right across the page so that heavier cloud like I did in the last one getting bigger and thicker and more pigmentation and tinting strength at the top of the paper to give it more weight. There might be reflexes though as well so you can let that happen with bits of yellow showing through the clouds towards edges especially between the edge of the cliff and the cloud here. So water and light and just a bit of yellow light breaking up that cloud just above the cliff. Now there's a kind of purple edge to the cliff as that rolls up with the heather. So that's going up across there and then with green I'm going to break that up with bushes and things in a kind of silhouette right towards the end. So that's coming forward. How to then draw in the cliff getting nearer, just a bit more detail and definition. So here at the front I'm going to break up all of this with more lines and some lines stroking across the chalk of the cliff. So just describing that a bit more. There's some roofs of little house huts and things here as well, and the edge of the beach. And then there's also more seaweed. So here, thin pointy lines going across, showing that this cliff is sitting on land by having a dark tone between the water and the solid structures here. So I'm going to just take water again and then with a bit of yellow and transparent water fill up this cliff right up until about the front so that that can mix all of those colours together a bit and that works it a little bit further away in perspective. And then leaving the white of the paper just to describe the details of the rock at the front. And of course I'm waiting for some sun rays just to break up all of this with a beautiful bright colour. So maybe there'll be some moment when the light reflects very well off this cliff. But uh, while I'm waiting for that, I can try and work in the foreground. So all these pebbles can be marked in, just stippling in with a flat head and then taking a pointy brush and with purple, drawing around the contours of groups of rocks and pebbles, round pebbles and then more 
pointy marks as that goes away and then maybe a bit of yellow ochre showing a strip of sand coming in just there and then even further closer even bigger rocks and pebbles and then here piles of rocks and pebbles there kind of pouring over the edge of this fence maybe a little bit of wall but nothing is too specific here it's all a little bit sketchy and a little bit suggestive so that I can then decide when to put in detail in the right place so here's some seaweed covered wood and taking some bright greens and dark greens and putting that life on the edge of the dead wood fence there so the wave breaker thing continuing off with closer and closer together posts as they get further away in perspective so yeah, then there might be some waves pulling in in the tide here so as this bit gets nearer you can see little groups of waves like that and a bit of foam so again just as I was doing the last one stroking in some arched water and then pulling that across with thinner brush lines and then to create the foam on the water and I take a little bit of oil pastel so I've got Sennelier blue so just put in a few marks of that and then a Sennelier yellow Naples yellow and just not be afraid to press in some little bits of pure pigment showing the edge of the wave turning into foam and so as this light starts to reflect off the cliff I can also break up this white with these thick pigment lines and dashes and then even on the little stones that have fallen down there oil pastel that is going to break through that glaze of watercolour and give a nice solid reflection of golden sunlight right here on the front in between the white of the paper and these marks there's going to be this heavy volume coming forward I can also take white oil pastel and even be brave enough to mix that into there as well just with flat bits of oil pastel to give it even more solid rocky surface and now with purple put in some nice little lines showing this edge coming near us so to get more definition and focus in the foreground with thinner outlines and contours in between the edges of leaves and these bushes and in between different rocks that have stuff growing on the tops of the surfaces of them. little bits of pebble and things undercutting the seaweed as well giving that rock a bit more solidness uh, solidity and then the grass going over the top of it sort of showing this white cliffs of Albion in the fog and then I'm just going to take a little bit of red and put in some
diagonal roofs of huts and beach huts and tiled roofs. There's a little road as well coming up the side of this park just leading up towards the top of the cliff so there a bit of grass around it and hedges just suggesting some kind of pathway rising up and some fences on the front of the waterfront some wall and steps coming into the beach piles of rocks just outlined with thin lines and then taking blue and using this as a colder tone to show things are getting further away and stippling in blue rocks So those blue rocks have piled up with the waves pushing them right up against this wall and then over the top of the wall you can see other piles of rocks. So I want this foreground to get thicker and so that means I need to have a bit more description here of details right nearer to me. So this perspective of Tiny, tiny, tiny pebbles becoming big forms with a heavier mass in the foreground than even all these larger things that are further away. So, so that's how these tiny rocks become a kind of subject of foreground by being bigger in perspective than big and large objects that are getting further into the distance. Using this same brush with a mixture of blues and greens, can outline more trees and hedges. And um, then I'm going to take another brush, just a clean one, and get more water. And this time I want it to just break up some of this into a little bit less focused area so that by putting just water over this and shaking it over the lines that will give them a bit less of a focused look and so that will pull the edge of the cliff further into the depth of the perspective and then there are clouds also just beneath here so a bit of yellow and more water and then tiny patches of blue cloud and uh, again just keep changing brushes to a new one to render this and take it away so that glow is going to get further and so the clouds get lower and lower as they get towards the back and so that means lower lines right near the horizon and closer together lines as the clouds go really far back. Um, I can also take again the white and put more light shining off the surface of the water just by smudging a bit of oil pastel over that so that then sunlight is showing and reflecting off the surface of that and maybe with the Naples yellow as well just breaking up that edge with a highlight giving that seaweed and water a, a kind of contra jour and then again in between clouds just little bits of light on the top of the clouds here so this thick oil 
is breaking up that watery, heavy form with dawning glow. And maybe some of that can also come onto this foreground and just finish off using this little piece of pastel by breaking up these rocks. And that gives it, using the texture of the paper as well, that gives that foreground something a bit more solid. Because I want to have also a kind of discussion between the solid, heavy forms and then the water. And that means giving the solid forms something a bit more pigmented a bit more tinted, a bit more nuance and grey and proper shadows and things like that, just speckled in and then also a harder edge of fence against the water so that that paper with its bleeding tone there in the water can be different to that solid painted in fence. Just breaking up the edge between this earth and the water and then the sky being these light forms. So yeah then coming towards the front a little bit more description here with more green in the bushes as they get nearer. And there we have, in 20 minutes, an impression of the cliffs in Eastbourne. Thank you very much for watching.